Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. The Missionaries of Charity, founded by Mother Teresa, have been forced out of their residence in Managua, Nicaragua. The government revoked their legal status to work in the country in June. Saint Mother Teresa met with Daniel Ortega, who welcomed them. Their work lasted nearly 40 years. The Nicaragua news agency La Prensa explained that the nuns went to Costa Rica, where the order already has a religious house. Bishop Manuel Eugenio Salazar Mora, of the Diocese of Tilleran, in Costa Rica, posted a video of the arrival of the nuns. We receive them with all the love they deserve for their service and dedication to God and the Church. There are 18 religious sisters who will be found passing through our country who were expelled by the government of Nicaragua. The Tilleran Diocese Facebook page said. Cardinal Leopoldo Brenes of Managua released a statement about the government's expulsion. We deeply regret the pain of so many of our brothers and sisters who will no longer have the attention they received from the sisters, he said. The sisters had a nursery, a home for abused and abandoned girls and a home for the elderly in the archdiocese. They also administered a shelter for abandoned and abused teenagers in southwest Nicaragua, with education, also of trades to help them find work. The Interior Ministry of Nicaragua, explained that their board of directors did not have sufficient Nicaraguan citizens. On Friday, July 8, the President of the United States signed an executive order on abortion access in response to the Supreme Court of the United States Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization decision that overturned Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey. Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore, Chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Pro-Life Activities, issued the following response. In response to the Dobbs decision, I called for the healing of wounds and repairing of social divisions, for reasoned reflection and civil dialogue, and for coming together to build a society and economy that supports marriages and families, and where every woman has the support and resources she needs to bring her child into this world in love. And as religious leaders, we pledged ourselves to continue our service to God's great plan of love for the human person, and to work with our fellow citizens to fulfill America's promise to guarantee the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all people. It is deeply disturbing and tragic that President Biden is choosing instead to use his power as President of the United States to promote and facilitate abortion in our country, seeking every possible avenue to deny unborn children their most basic human and civil right, the right to life. Rather than using the power of the executive branch to increase support and care to mothers and babies, the president's executive order seeks only to facilitate the destruction of defenseless, voiceless human beings. I implore the president to abandon this path that leads to death and destruction and to choose life. As always, the Catholic Church stands ready to work with this administration and all elected officials to protect the right to life of every human being and to ensure that pregnant and parenting mothers are fully supported in the care of their children before and after birth. This statement was released by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. A diocese in Arizona announced the death of a popular young social media seminarian. Passing of Tucson seminarian Miguel Angel who is very popular with his Catholic evangelization on social media. It is with great sorrow that I share with you that one of our seminarians, Miguel Angel Perez Mendez, died early on Thursday evening, July 7. Miguel Angel was on a heart-lung bypass machine for approximately three weeks, a very long time for this form of life support. He had suffered from COVID, which may not be directly related to his passing, this past December. He then had pneumonia in midwinter at the seminary, for which he was temporarily hospitalized but appeared to recover from well. When he began to feel poorly again in late April, Father Jorge Farias traveled to the seminary to drive home with him. It was approximately a month ago that he was then unexpectedly hospitalized with pneumonia again and collapsed lungs. Sepsis and other medical issues created a catastrophic situation from which his body was unable to emerge, despite receiving the very best of medical care. Miguel Angel's mother traveled quickly from Mexico to Tucson approximately two weeks ago and, along with Father Jorge, has remained by his side. 
Bishop Edward Weissenberger, wrote, I would note that Miguel Angel's desire to be a priest and serve the people of our diocese was his life's goal. Kindly pray for the gentle repose of the soul of Miguel Angel, along with his mother and family as they grieve. Eternal rest grant unto him O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Miguel Angel was active on social media, using it as a medium for evangelization, and was known as El Semi Miguel. The Catholic Bishops of Mexico, issue an appeal for a day of prayer for peace after two priests are killed. They wrote, Let us pray together for justice and reconciliation for peace. The murders and disappearances that are committed daily in the country are a call from God to unite to pray for peace. The spilled blood of these brothers and sisters is the blood of Jesus that falls to the earth to make it fertile and embark on a path for peace. That is why we call for a day of prayer for peace. We need be united at this time when the indignation of our people, at the barbarity of violence, they are opening a door for peace. There are four actions we ask of you. 1. In all the Masses to be celebrated on July 10th, remember everyone. The priests, men and women religious who have been assassinated in the country and offer the intention of the Eucharist for his life so that is pain. Accompany me on this path for peace. In the temples can be placed. Photographs of these men and women who have given their lives for the people of God and have received violent death. 2. This month of July we ask you to celebrate Masses or pray. Community meetings in meaningful places that represent all people who have disappeared or suffered a violent death, be they homicides, malicious, femicide, social activists or any other person in situation of exclusion or vulnerability, there is a wound to heal in there. There is the strength that the country needs today to build peace. Try to remember of the death and resurrection of Jesus, in these places, will transform the fear and strength to build peace. 3. As a prophetic sign of our Church, the Eucharist on July 31st. Let us pray for the perpetrators, let us pray for their lives and the conversion of their hearts, let us stretch out our hands to receive them with a repentant heart to God's house. They are also our brothers and they need our help. Prayer. No more violence in our country. 4. Each diocese, religious congregation or patronage will define the actions to undertake to pay for this road to peace, as they are holy hours. Processions for peace, messages to the people of God. Today we need stories of hope, images where we see the community praying and asking for peace. We ask you to spread your actions on social networks. Our commitment is for social dialogue to build a path of justice and reconciliation that leads us to peace. We want to open horizons of dialogue to build up peace. We are facing a complex problem that needs everyone and all to take care of it from the root and thus let the risen Christ bring forth a new look that allows building the agreements that Mexico needs today. We entrust ourselves to the Virgin of Guadalupe, who has always accompanied the people of God in the most difficult moments of its history. There there is the mother who gives us a hug of peace and sends us to be pilgrims of the hope and unity. Watch our program every Friday at 7:30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.